Unless you want to get a chip implanted directly into your brain, EMG technology is the closest thing we know today to the science fiction tech of full dive. If you don't even know what EMG stands for, or you want to know why I've come to that conclusion, stick around, virtual dreamer. My name is Gregory, and I'll be explaining why EMGs are the future of VR controls. EMG stands for electromyography, which is a technology that uses electrodes to read muscle activity. Put the electrodes on the right muscles and process the data with a computer, and you've got a way to let your application or game know what your body is doing. There's a lot of potential uses for this kind of tech in virtual reality. We're already using our muscles pretty intensely in modern VR gaming. So tracking that data more directly with EMGs can be an accuracy upgrade since EMG doesn't require a line of sight to a camera or a base station in order to work. It's just attached to your muscles. It's not like this technology is new or some untested thing either. EMG is a centuries old technology that has even been put into products that already exist on the market at this time. The Thalmic Labs Mayo, released in 2016 around the same time as the original Oculus Rift and HTC Vive VR headsets. The MyoWare by Advancer Technologies has been around in some form or another for close to a decade now. I've got over a dozen of them. If you need more assurance this is going to be big, know well that the market leader of VR, Meta, has discussed EMGs multiple times now during major presentations. They've even demonstrated feats that are either hard, if not impossible right now, with controllers or optical tracking, such as typing at very high speeds with accuracy or controlling fingers with someone who doesn't have fingers to control with. The potential here is hard to deny. Of course, EMG is not quite perfect yet. Otherwise, we'd already be using it as our standard for VR, right? The immediate issue that jumps right out here is that electromyograms need to have their electrodes placed directly on the muscles that they'll be reading. While this can be somewhat accommodated when it comes to controlling our hands via bands on our forearms, this quickly becomes a hassle when you need to start putting it on your legs, your back, or other body parts. Believe me, I'm trying to build a whole damn VR suit using these things. It's tough, especially when you consider that you'll need several electrodes on one or multiple muscles to get data that can be useful for a VR application. Multiple electrodes and the computing needed to process them isn't exactly cheap here either, as was seen with the $200 launch price of a single Thalmic Labs Mayo back in 2016. Seeing as the Mayo already failed, got sold to Control Labs, then got acquired by Meta, the results for commercial efforts of EMG aren't exactly promising. Hence why you can't blame Meta for hedging their bets here, as while they are doing work with EMG, they are also simultaneously doing work on developing new controllers and improving hand tracking at the same time. Clearly their vision for the future of controls isn't just hedging on one thing. For as many issues as EMG technology may be facing on its rise, this doesn't negate that the direction it's pointed to is still overall positive. Whether it happens sooner or it happens later, EMG will become the dominant non-surgical high accuracy VR control system simply because there's no competition for that crown. The only thing stopping EMGs from overcoming the quantity and cost issues they're facing is mass production, which will only be encouraged by the need to harness its unique features. It doesn't have occlusion issues like optical tracking does due to the direct link with the body. Unlike controllers, EMG directly gets its data from the body parts it's attached to, which means it can get information from body parts that things like buttons and sticks can't interface with very well, like our backs and facial muscles. On a competitive level, EMG has an advantage that actually borders on cheating. The electrical basis of the technology, as well as the electrical basis of our nervous systems, means that EMGs can sometimes pick up on what our bodies want to do before they've even had the time to perform the movement essentially giving EMGs 
negative lag to work with. Yeah, how's that for Ultra Instinct gamer stuff right there? And difficult to make a full suit, though it is being for me, the main reason I got into EMG tech in the first place was because I wanted a means of experiencing Sword Art Online's full dive VR controls in real life. And unlike every other VR control solution, EMG doesn't actually require movement to work. So in theory, if you bind your body's movements with physical restraints, you'd still be able to move about in the virtual world unimpeded just like you can do with full dive systems. And so long as the best way of interfacing with our nervous systems remains direct implants, EMG will remain the best way to interface with our intents without surgery being involved. While it definitely won't be the cheapest solution, nor the most convenient one, it's hard to say that it won't be the most powerful future VR control system that doesn't involve opening your skull for Elon Musk.